Foxhall Stadium just outside Suffolk's county town of Ipswich. This fast quarter-mile tarmac circuit under the banner of Speedworth Motorsports has hosted short oval motor racing for many years, from the traditional banger and stock car classes through to what are now the super sophisticated national hot rods. Now, in this program, we're going to feature the 75-lap CP Dines drainage contractor National Hot Rod World Championship. We'll go behind the scenes. We'll take a look at the cars, the personalities, and everything that makes up the spectacle of National Hot Rod Racing. So stick with us now as we join hundreds and thousands of race fans that have travelled from right across the world to be part of this two-day festival of motorsport for the CP Dines Drainage Contract and National Hot Rod Championship of the World. The route to the world final grid for every driver is an arduous one. And to, and to explain the qualification system for the CP Dines Drainage Contractor National Hot Rod Championship of the World, delighted to welcome the race director, Brian Oliver. So, Brian, talk us through qualifying, please, which starts, I think, in August and ends in June. Yeah, that's right, David. They uh, qualify all year round. It's a, it's a really tough series, it has to be said. Uh, we break a little bit in the winter just for a couple of months, but the drivers are running all the way from August right the way through to June and really it's just to get on the grid for this world championship. Now of course not every driver is able to achieve that you only take a certain number it's the top however many in the points isn't it? We do absolutely uh, we take the top drivers from Northern Ireland the top drivers from Southern Ireland and the top in the points from Scotland as well and they come straight through to the world final grid and we have a slightly different system for the English drivers what we try to do is reward the English drivers for their commitment and for, the, for doing all the rounds. So the drivers that, that compete in the rounds and do well in them, they actually gain by getting a better grid position as a result of that. So of course when they've got here and they've made it to the grid, it doesn't end there because they have three what are called hot laps against the clock here at the circuit ready for the uh, World Championship, Brian. What's that all about? Well, what happens with the English drivers is, is they, the top 20 in the English Points Championship after that full year of competing, they come through to the World Championship final and we divide them into groups of four cars. So you have a top group, which is made up of the top four drivers in the English Points Championship. Then there's a second group, which is made up of the next four in the championship and so on right all the way down to positions 20. Now, the idea is, is to say to re reward drivers who have competed all, all year round. It means that if a driver has a puncture or a spin or something goes wrong during those hot laps, all is not lost. So a driver that might be at the top of the points chart, if he has the most awful qualifying time, uh, he can't drop below a certain position on the grid. So he's always going to be in that, that full lock, isn't he? OK, I understand that. So let's get on with it then as we see the reigning world champion, Malcolm Blackman, the first to show then three time laps. And let's see what Malcolm Blackman can do. Well, Blackman goes very, very quick indeed. There's uh, Matt Simpson, another young charger, 303, existing European champion. And now from Northern Ireland, it's young John Christie in 962, another one of the favourites. Then we see young Shane Murphy. Many people tipping him to go all the way this year in 970. So Shane Murphy hugging the uh, curb there around the Kent Cam's turn and heads towards the timing line. So Shane Murphy then driving the uh, Tigra and now former world champion, he's national points champion again and he's Thunder 500 champion, it's 115 Chris Head. The new market based driver then would dearly like to put the gold roof back aboard that Tigra B car. So feeling pretty confident is uh, Chris Head. Certainly looks it in 115 then. He's done it once before at Foxhall. He's taken the gold roof. Can he do it again? He goes very, very quick with a 14.20 for Chris Head. 115. And over the line he goes. He's three time laps done and dusted. Chris Head then goes quickest. Well, if he was confident before, he must be supremely confident now. He does go fastest. Let's see what he's got to say for himself. Young Chris Head. It's day two of the CP Dines National Hot Rod Championship of the World at the Speedworth Motorsports Speed Weekend. And day two, it's taken us this long to catch up with the pole sitter, Chris Head. And 
Looking at the sky now, Chris. This isn't what you wanted, is it? Not at all, Davis. Uh, far from what I wanted. This, I only do the dry, to be fair. And <laughs> we'll see how we go. But hopefully it clears, but I can't see it. Now, to be fair, you say you're someone that only does the dry. I've seen you do some really, really good stuff in the wet. Are you are you hiding your light under a bushel a bit here, Chris? Uh, I probably ain't as bad as I make out in the wet, but I, I don't enjoy it at all. So, so with the glasses steaming up and bits and pieces, so we try and sort that out. And oh, we should see. So. Well, going back to that quali lap yesterday, of course, you've got three laps out there. You've got to do it in three laps. That, those are the only times that are recorded. A 14.20, that really was remarkable. Did you think you'd got it in the car? And indeed, you. Uh, from fra the practice, the car didn't feel very good at all. Uh, in the hot laps, it really hooked together and went well. And it's just a shame it isn't going to be dry today. Now, whatever happens as we head towards the race today, today it's raining at the moment. As you say, it might clear up then it becomes a tyre strategy decision, doesn't it? Do you run a couple of wets down the outside? Do you go all slicks, all wet? I mean, if it's wet, it's wet. But if it's in between, that's really difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it totally becomes a lottery then. It's a, it's a big gamble, but I think it's going to be full, full wet all around all day today. Well, listen, you've done it once. We'd dearly love to see you do it again, Chris. You've had a blistering season. You're national points champion again. Um, you took the Thunder 500 in style. You do go into this with confidence really brimming, don't you? Until it rains, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until it rains. But, no, it's just, we've had a brilliant year so far. And we'll see how we go. Best of luck to you, Chris. Thank you very much. Well, we will find out if Chris Head sweeps up in the wet after this break. Speed Weekend here at the Foxhall Heath Raceway just outside Ipswich, the county town of Suffolk. Well, we had sunshine on day one, it's day two now, and it's rainy. What sort of a difference will that make to the race? Well, we're going to find out. Well, it's making a difference to these spectators, that's for sure, sure, sure. They've got their uh, brollies up, but uh, nothing's going to stop the enthusiasm that these race fans have for their favourite sport. And with me is four-time World Horror Champion, Carl Bordley. Weather like this, Carl, not ideal. Certainly not ideal, Dave, no. Um, same for everybody, though. They've all got their wets on, and uh, it's now down to the person in the hot seat. Uh, talking of hot seats, there's Sam Holland then. What pressure she's on, because, of course, she's into the grid as uh, first reserve as we see the uh, girls going down the grid there. You've spent a whole year qualifying for this race, Carl. You so, so want it to be sunny and dry. This does throw up a whole set of challenges. Lots and lots of challenges, Dave. Um, further back down the grid, the person who's, you know, probably least expected to do something might have a chance. There's several of them out there thinking this might well be my day. And it is very much, isn't it? The weather is a great level or so where we can see the grid. Uh, Shane Murphy be Chris Head. Chris Head on pole, of course. Alongside him, Shane Murphy. Then it's Christy Hardy. Uh, then it's Matt Simpson. Gavin Murray. Uh, then Malcolm Blackman. Gary Woolsey. Billy Bonner. Mark Paffey. See, someone like Mark Paffey, who I've always thought is a reasonable racer in the wet. I mean, Billy Bonner, you know, a Scottish, a Scottish qualifier. Um, actually, when you're looking a little bit further down the grid, as you can see on the screen there, any one of those drivers in these conditions it is possible isn't it definitely possible dave as i say any one of those you know i wouldn't want to pick one of those definitely not well we go on board and we can see with uh, the shane murphy on board camera exactly what it's like from the uh, cockpit of his uh, tigra and uh, of course we're seeing it now on a rolling lap this is just a, uh, a warm-up a formation lap if you like when those cars uh, begin to get up to speed of course the spray must be incredible you can see just on the floor pan there, Dave, he's, uh, he's got puddles already. <laughs> so, uh, less than ideal conditions, but uh, we're still expecting an absolutely scintillating race. Right at the back there, Wayne Lee, well done for your qualification. Uh, great to see all these cars and all these drivers who have spent a hard, arduous year qualifying just to be on the grid here at the showpiece event that is the uh, world final here at Ipswich. And the butterflies in the stomach that I'm feeling, well, yours, Carl, as a driver, it must be worse than ever. I've got butterflies just uh, just being here, Dave. So, yeah, I mean, from a driver's point of view, the adrenaline now is pumping and you're, you're wanting the, the pace car out of the way and to get on with the race and settle yourself down. And 
see where you're at after 10 laps and think about the rest of the race. We can actually see the rain pouring off the back of Shane Murphy's car as we're getting ready to rumble for the National Hot Rod World Championship and Chris Head then as we see from what a fantastic camera shot this is already those cars up to a speed as we see the green flag go down and Chris Head leads there's Shane Murphy we're on board with him right behind the 115 car of Chris Head that you can see in the lead there 75 hard laps as John Christie goes up the inside is he going to get second going into this bend I think so Yes, John Christie goes through, so now it's Head from Christie from Murphy. Head taking it very, very wide. Is there more grip inside, outside at this stage of the race? Surely you don't know, Carl. Just a case of finding your feet, Dave, really. Just trying the different lines. Some of the guys will be using the inside, thinking, dare I go wide? Anyone can take a chance. You, well, might just, you might just go wide and find a bit of grip, and all of a sudden you're making places. Well, Chris is going wide, and it looked like uh, John Christie was just taking a look up the inside there as we see uh, Steve Burrows there. And we can see the rest of the cars coming through here as Mark Paffey goes out wide and lets uh, Stuart Doak through. We're on board with Mark Paffey. Uh, looking forward now, just look at the... Uh, water already over the lens of our onboard camera you can see what it's like for a driver here torrid torrid conditions but they're coping with it well there is a uh, doki then about to try and go past uh, mike loose more the uh, driver from down there in the uh, west country and the rest of them bunching up a bit here three four abreast gavin Tabor there in the treble five car two seven eight colin gone campaigner was on his outside there we can see the Cirrus Plastics car of uh, Stuart Doak in 996 as we go back on board with the third place driver right now. This is Shane Murphy. Many people tipping Shane to do well here this week, Ed. Oh, and Head goes so wide. Surely that's enough for Christie. Yes, surely Carl, he's done enough. Or is Chris going to get more traction now? Uh, John's the man in the place. And Shane Murphy gets a bit of a lump there. And that looked like Matt Simpson coming through on the inside there. There we can see Matt Simpson. There's John Christie in 962. There's Chris Head who has fallen down the order now. Look at the speed that these cars are carrying into this turn. I think if you watch closely, Dave, most of the cars are holding the inside line. That seems to be where the majority of the grip is at the minute. Um, also the least of the water as well. Well, Billy Bonner there getting very, very sideways. Out goes uh, Tom Casey there, another one of the old veteran campaigners in the mercedes bodied car there he's been hung out to dry excuse the pun so casey trying to find a safe spot up against the uh armco as we look down from the kent cams corner at chris head who's gone back down the order and now after just a few laps all of our cameras with the sheer deluge of water we're trying to bring you the best shots that we possibly can of this exciting final as now gavin murray takes a look up the inside of Shane Murphy, Gavin Murray, the Southwold based driver. It's and quite it's quite interesting, Dave, to see how these uh, the different drivers must have set, set set their cars. Some of them are preferring the uh, the right tight inside line, whereas, whereas someone like Chris Head he's going in to the corner really tight, but then he seems to just drift a little wide there and then get a better corner exit. So that's just different car setup and different driver strategy as we've got wave yellows there for uh, uh, Casey there. We can see the wave yellow flag with the marshal. So the early stages of this race, and it's a full course wave yellow now as some uh, debris is being recovered from the track. Uh, we're on board with the uh, Shane Murphy camera. Shane has gone uh, uh, back down the order now. And there we can see uh, Casey in 961. That's, I guess, the end of his race. And they're looking from uh, Mark Paffey's car. We can see the rest of the cars in front. It's on the back straight here at Foxhall. One of the fastest oval uh, circuits in the country. And it's been the spiritual home. It's been the home of the World Championship for many, many years. So Casey then parks up his Mercedes. And there he's uh, on his way out of the car. His race done and dusted. And uh, we're going to enjoy the action as... Uh, the race resumes for this uh, Hot Rod World Championship, and we're going to be back after this short break. A little bit different to perhaps the Tiguan we might drive on the road, Carl. Yeah, vastly different, Dave. Um, what you're looking at there is basically a purpose-built space frame chassis. Uh, the panels are fiberglass, reinforced with Kevlar, um, and there's lots and lots of trick bits underneath. 
Lots and lots of trick bits and lots and lots of speed as we resume racing here at Foxhall Stadium for the Hot Rod World Championship. And our curb cab picking up the action as the defending champion, Malcolm Blackman. He is hard on the tail now of John Christie in 9.62. Now, Bal Malcolm Blackman, of course, where is that gold roof? He's not going to want to give it up without a fight, Carl. No, once you've got the gold roof, you certainly want to keep it. So he'll be doing everything that he possibly can to get past that 962 car and get out the front and hopefully build a bit of a lead. So John Christie then, uh, son of a legendary Ormond Christie, also won the Hot Rod uh, World Championship many, many times as Blackman dives up the inside. And John Con Christie surely made a mistake there and just left a gap, Carl. Billy Bonner goes sideways past our curb cam in the 844 car. Fantastic shots that we're seeing here as these cars are turning to turn one. And uh, wow, that was a gap left by Christie and now Blackman has gone through. Yeah, that's all it was, uh, Dave. Basically, Malcolm just got better drive off the corner. John's obviously looking at it in his mirror and he just cannot close the door in time and Malcolm was through. Well, we saw uh, Billy Bonner get it all tidied up as he went past the curb cam in, in uh, straight line condition. As now, uh, Chris Head under some pressure from uh, Gavin Murray in car number 95. Gavin lives up the coast in Southwold. And he's through on the inside as well as Chris. I don't know whether he left a gap there or whether he just didn't have the grip, grip, grip at all. Jeff Simpson, sorry, here he is, Matt Simpson, son of Jeff Simpson. <laughs> right behind Gavin Murray now. They're, they're, they're piling up behind John Christie. Chris here just seems to have a bit of understeer under steer mid-corner, Dave. They've uh, understeer, beer, 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 and whereas he's turning the wheel and the car just seems, seems, seems to go straight at the front. He's just struggling. He seems to uh, just miss the corner a little bit. And uh, we see Mark Paffy now. Oh, and there's uh, Sam Holland in the number 10 car. And uh, Paffy looks like he's got some problem. From Shane Murphy, we go on board with him now as he's down the inside now of uh, John Christie. Chris Head is the car that we can see right in front of us. There is Gavin Murray in car 95. Behind him then is young Matt Simpson in 3003. Sean Taylor, a backmarking car uh, on the outside there as the rest of the pack go through. Jack Blood is out in car number 92. That's his car rested up there on the shale. And uh, there's a real feel feel fight going on here. It's a real fight, Dave. Gavin Murray in 95. He's, uh, he seems to be the one who's made the most progress so far. He'll be... Uh, He'll be trying to make some more progress as the laps go on. At the, at the same time, he's going to try and have to look after his tyres too. Now, of course, that's crucial, isn't it? Even in wet conditions, when you're running full wet weather uh, tyres, it's a long, long race, Carl. So, so 75 hard laps. It's a long race, Dave. Yeah, the tyres have, have, have got little uh, bobbles on. Obviously, they're groove, groove, groove tyres to uh, to spray as much, much, much water up and, and get yourself in contact with, with, with the ground. You start wearing the sides of the blocks off. Uh, and the grip all of a sudden just disappears. Yes, yes. Now we just saw uh, Matt Simpson there take, take, take to the curb, and he's through. Hit, 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 he's got through. Now Gavin Murray, the water are absolutely piling off these uh, left-hand front tire there, and there was a gap there, and Matt Simpson was through. Unbelievably. This camera is still working in these, these, these deluge conditions. There is young, young, young Matt Simpson, desperately wants to win, win, win this. He goes wide now, loses Chris Chris grip there. Gavin Murray surely is going to go bow, bow, back through. Little bit of c -c contact. And, and, and uh, Shane Murphy, 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 waving at someone there. Or was he just wiping his visor? C -c 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 <laughs> I think he was having a wipe of his visor there, 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 Dave. He was also looking at... Uh, Matt and Gavin in front, just host, host, hoping that the two of them were going to get together somehow and he was going to turn to and take advantage, but yeah. it didn't quite work for him, for him, for him. Now, of course, if you've got a wise head and you can ease, ease, ease up a little bit and just let those uh, battle, 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 battle out and then pick up any pieces that come to to, to, uh, come to rest, as we see, see, see Glenn Bell now in car number nine going bang, bang past uh, Chris Head. Now, crack, crack, Chris is having an absolute mare of it now, as we, as we, as we see, uh, that was Gavin Murray spinning, spinning, spinning in car 95. Yep, don't know what went on there, Dave. Whether he just lost the back end of the car, or, or, or someone else was uh, responsible for that, for that, for that one. Didn't quite see that. So, did he, did he, did he get a helping hand, or did he do it all himself? Well, 
there we can see TT Jason Q now in car number one some 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 seven 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 four Chris Head right behind him and if and if Shane Murphy there in the yellow and black 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 Tigra uh, right on the top of your shot now just turning into the uh, first turn in nine seven oh he's got Glenn Bell behind him now Glenn Bell who started down uh, the grid quite significantly he seems to be, be becoming good now so the weather conditions play into his advantage he of course one of the uh, Northern Irish drivers. Uh, do they have more rain than us? I don't think so. But uh, he certainly seems that the track is and the car is coming to, to, to him now. Definitely coming to him, Dave. Yeah, he's the one who's making all the progress. Remarkable uh, recovery, too, from Gavin Murray, isn't it? He's had a spin look, and already he's back up fighting amongst the pack. Yeah, he's got his race back on course. So back on board with uh, Shane Murphy then. We saw the uh, yellow uh, Terry Hun car out on the uh, bend there. Terry Hun obviously with some problem just seeing that car now. We can see the back end of uh, Simpson. That's the battle that we're watching between uh, young Matt Simpson and this guy, Shane Murphy. Feather in the throttle there. You can't give it too much. Can you go? Oh, as he has to pile on the opposite lock to correct it. Yeah, he had to correct that one. Yeah, got on the power a bit too early coming off the corner there, Dave. Once Matthew was through, I thought he was going to start to close the gap onto, uh, onto the back of Malcolm's bumper, but if anything, it seems that Shane's either going with him. Now this is where Malcolm is in trouble, is he not? He's stuck in traffic there. That's going to allow these to catch up, isn't it? There's Glenn Bell, there's Matt Simpson. We can see the pack that uh, Matt's in, uh, that uh, Malcolm Blackman's in, as uh, Blackman does get through there, going past Gavin Tabor, Shane Murphy doing the same. So they're all going to be on the back of this train of cars in just a moment, Carl. If you're in Matthew or Shane's car, you're just praying that they're going to hold Malcolm up so you can try and get to his bumper, really. But if obviously rolls reversed. If you're in Malcolm's car, you want to clear the back marks as soon as possible and create that gap again. Now, of course, the blue flag is shown. What's the blue flag for? Blue blue flag is just to tell the bike markers that you've got someone coming up behind you who's uh, who's on the lead lap. It doesn't mean move out of the way. It's basically just telling you to hold a line, hold either the inside or the outside line, and let the driver who's you know, trying to get past to... Uh, to choose what route he wants to take. So you've just got to give him the opportunities. We see uh, Burnshaw there in car number 100 and Blackman all over the back of Colin Gone there in car number 278. You've got 780. Uh, Loose Moore there. There is uh, Malcolm Blackman then. And there now, coming around the outside, is Matt Simpson. There he is in the 303 car chasing the uh, existing champion. Malcolm Blackman down. Again, Shane Murphy getting a very sideways moment there. With all those cars and that spray, Dave, I think it's... Uh... It's quite a task just to see where you're going. So there is Blackman, and Murphy's up the inside of Simpson. It looked like he was going to dive up the inside from our onboard shot, and indeed he has, and he's got Glenn Bell right behind him now. So Simpson uh, there through, being on the outside line, left a gap. That was, that was enough for Murphy to go through. And all these back markers are playing in Shane's hands at the same time. Yes, they are, and Blackman really is stuck in there, isn't he? But as you say, every driver's keeping their line. It's down to Malcolm to find a route through, isn't it? And if that, through is, <laughs> that route is a little nerf onto the side of Colin Gong and then to the outside of car number 780, surely that will be enough. It's uh, Neville Loosemore then. No, it's Mike Loosemore in 780 that Malcolm's got to get past now. Blue flag being waved there, as uh, Carl described earlier. We're back with uh, Shane Murphy then, who's got uh, Terry Hunt in front of him. And there's Blackman with a real sideways moment. Malcolm's definitely trying hard. He wants to clear those back markers as soon as possible and get some uh, some distance between himself and Shane. He can probably just about see Shane and, uh, and Matt Simpson in his mirror, and he's obviously trying to get that break. Now, that has taken a Malcolm com com a long while to get through those. That won't have helped his... Uh, his quest, as you say, to try and put some distance between him and those that are challenging. As we see Sam Holland going round and Shane Murphy's gone! Oh, and uh, there's contact there. Shane Murphy, there's his car just to the right of your screen there, right in front there, 970, he's gone round. Now, I didn't see the uh, making of that turnaround, Carl, but he was uh, challenging, and he's now out. So full course uh, yellow flag once again. So that means all the cars have got to line up in uh, race order. In race order, and the back marks will be put in their their spots in between the uh, the lead cars as well. So it's not just a case of uh, second place being behind Malcolm. The the back markers will be in their their spots as well. So they've still got to get past those back marking cars if that's where if uh, that's where they were just before the race was brought under the uh, yellow 
Uh, caution flags. There's Colin Gom in 278. There is Chris Head who has just gone backwards. Problem with the car, do you think, or just the conditions too much? Like I said earlier, David, looks as though he's got a fair bit of understeer through the mid corner point. Um, if you get that, then it's a, it's a great struggle to get back on the throttle. Now, here's Shane Murphy getting out of the car. He will be so despondent when he, after having challenged so well, Carl, and driven so well. And we've seen him, you know, a couple of sideways moments from him where he was just push, 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 wasn't he? Yeah, he's obviously been trying very hard. Uh, Shane's one of those people, he's been knocking on the door for, for three or four years now, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain it'll only be a matter of time before he wins one. Well, that from the uh, four-time Hot Rod World Champion Carl Baldy alongside me here as we see a collection of retired cars, including Woolsey and uh, Paffy was in there as well. OK, the uh, pace car, the Speedworth pace car picks up pace. And uh, when the green flag goes down, there is our race leader, the current world champion. It's 901, Malcolm Blackman. Problem there for Stuart Doak, maybe in the 996 car, Carl as the rest of the pack are going through. He's letting them through. through. I could see him wave from the cockpit of the car there. He wants to run off the back. He's going to try, yeah, possibly watering the electrics or something, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. We can only, uh, we can only guess. OK, so there is uh, two back-marking cars then that the uh, rest of the pack have got to get past, and in particular, this young man, number nine, Glenn Bell, who over the last part, he's driven like an absolute demon, Carl. Yeah, to be fair, he's looked very, very good in the wet. Um, didn't qualify too well up yesterday. Um, perhaps the conditions will come to him. Matt Simpson there, another big, big challenger here. The European champion proudly displayed on the roof. That's what the red and yellow checkers denote. And uh, behind him is uh, 95 Gavin Murray, already been out, but back in and driven so, so very well to get up to that position. As the green flag is waved once again, and racing resumes. Here it is, the National Hot Rod World Championship at Foxhall Stadium. And Glenn Bell then, br brilliant start from him. Right in front of him, he's got to get past Diggy Burdenshaw in car number 100. There is Blackman, who's uh, got a blistering start as well. Now, of course, after that yellow flag, he's got a relatively clear track in front of him. One advantage that must be for him to put some laps on now. It's a major advantage, Dave, yeah. No spray in his, his, his eyes. He can basically see, see, see as much as he's going to see today anyway. Uh, he's now a case of getting his head down and making that gap as big as he possibly can. So Gavin Murray then with uh, Mike Loosemore there. Gavin goes out wide. He's got Jason Q in uh, car number 174. Uh, to challenge as well. Gavin sticks, though, with the outside line at the moment, hoping to get around uh, Mike Loosemore, and he's done it this time. Just enough traction there to tuck in. Yeah, he's back on the favourite inside line. That's obviously where the grip is. Uh, obviously, now he's got his sights on catching up with the 303 car and, and possibly further. Yes, well, let's see how he can do. Bearing in mind that Gavin has been round once, did a, did a complete donut, lost a load of places, got got back out again and racing. So there's Burnshaw, there's Bell. Now Burnshaw in this is but a back marker. So Glenn Bell has got to get past him if he's going to make any challenge on uh, cars further up there as Burnshaw goes very, very wide. But he's going to, is he going to keep that? Yes, he's going to let uh, Glenn Bell through. So that was a good bit of driving from Burnshaw then. Yeah, very good, very fair as well. You know, he's, um, he's held his line, he's seen Glenn there and decided to leave the door open and let him choose his line and obviously he can now chase after the leader. So Gavin Murray we focus on then the big Dayglo 95 on the side of his car and we see the big number nine on Glenn Bell's car now as he goes off in pursuit then so too young Matt Simpson uh, not far behind him oh, and we see uh, trouble there for Mike Loosemore but no trouble so far for Glenn Bell. Very nearly kissing that curb, Carl. Oh. Yeah, he's obviously hugging the corners really, really tight. Um, it's obviously where the maximum grip is. You can see he's just working at the steering wheel a little bit around the corner. He's obviously getting back on the throttle nice and early, and um, that's giving him a good exit from the corner. Now, the rain just hasn't let off at all, has it? And Blackman is uh, carrying on like a thing possessed. Of course, he would love to retain this gold roof. Malcolm, one of the most focused drivers, and spends so many hours in the workshop perfecting that car, Carl. And we must remember that all these drivers spend a lot of time on most cars. You know that better than anybody. Yeah, the cars take a lot of looking after. It's a lot of hours in a workshop every week, but, um, you know, to turn up at a weekend like this and uh, and get a good result makes it all worthwhile for driver and team. So Glenn Bell, we're watching now. 
And there is our race leader, Malcolm Blackman. Look at the spray coming off Sean Taylor's car just in front of Malcolm Blackman there. And there really is, apart from that inside line, it's like a river around the outside that there. And these drivers having to uh, navigate, and that's almost the right word, around these... Uh, just trying to find a line. Now, are you, you... Clearly, Carl, you're not looking for deep water, are you? You're looking for the driest possible line as Simpson gets very sideways. You're looking for the driest possible line, Dave, but it's not always, always the uh, the line with the most grip. You're just trying to find where the where the grip is, get the throttle down, and hopefully the car will go forwards and, uh, and not sideways. So now, Glenn Bell is within a couple of car lengths of Malcolm Blackman. So... From a mid-race charge, Glenn Bell is now in second place and is chasing down hard, 9-1, Malcolm Blackman. Now, Blackman, the reigning champion, Glenn Bell, he would love to take the gold roof uh, to Northern Ireland. Now, if anyone is going to drive defensively Carl you've been in this position surely you're going to stick your elbows out metaphorically and make that car as wide as you can aren't you that will be uh, the widest 206 that, um, <laughs> that Malcolm's driven for the next few laps that's for sure um, obviously it's one thing catching somebody it's completely different getting past of course it is so uh, as Carl has said there Malcolm driving the uh, Peugeot 206cc uh, Glenn Bell then in the Vauxhall Tigra almost welded to the back bumper now as he piles on the opposite lock. Now, a couple of back-marking cars in front. You've got Gavin Tabor there in car treble five. But Blackman makes short work of Tabor. Then uh, it's David Casey in car number 261. And again, I mean, Casey driving so, so fairly, just giving them a line to go through. So it's down to Malcolm to defend. It's down to Glenn to tr try and get past in tricky conditions here at Foxhall. So Glenn looking very, very aggressive, but again, if you're too aggressive, Carl, surely if you give it too much throttle off of one of these corners, you could end up sideways, couldn't you? Oh, as he looks for a gap there, Malcolm has left half a gap, but he shuts the door. That was very fair from both of them, yeah. Tiny little gap. Glenn tried to pop his nose in, Malcolm said. Uh, no, definitely not. Not having any of that. So then, he is going to... Well, Glenn going all the way around the outside here. And surely that's... Well, in these conditions, as he comes up against the uh, backmarking car of uh, Danny Hahn. Kind of ran out of road there, but I don't think he would have made that pass stick somehow around the outside. Surely, surely not enough grip there. Just shows you how much water is on the outside there as well, Dave. As soon as Glenn went there, the car just, just seemed to aquaplane straight on going to the corner. So again, look at the spray coming off of Blackman's car there. It's like a James Bond oil slick coming off the back of the car, isn't it? And Glenn again going for the outside. You've got to give him credit. He's trying every which way but loose to get past Malcolm Blackman here. Piles on the opposite lock as he goes in a bit deep there, Carl. He's just going to now be sitting there thinking to himself that he's just going to have one, probably, well, definitely one, possibly two opportunities to make a pass. It's just a case of he's just got to position the car and get himself right ready so that if, if that chance arises, he just needs to make sure that he takes it. Now, whilst these two are battling away, of course, that's playing into the hands a little bit of Matt Simpson, who's uh, able to make up ground as well. He's in third place at the moment, so it's 9 double one who's first. Then we see Glenn Bell in second place. Then it's uh, 3 3 in second place again. Glenn Bell takes a look around the outside. Nothing doing. And look how Simpson is he's trying to get on terms. Simpson going in a bit deep and sliding there as well. Yeah, definitely, Dave. Mal 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 Malcolm's worked out, obviously, that the grip is all on the inside line, so he he he's just basically saying to Glenn, this is, where this is where I'm going. If you want to come past me, you've got to do, I do, I do it the hard way and go the outside line. Obviously, they're slowing each other down a little bit, little bit, little bit uh, which is playing into the hands of, uh, of, uh, of Matt Simpson. So, uh, Glenn then doing everything he can, can, can to worry Malcolm Blackman, but Blackman's been a run, a run around a long while, national hot rod racer to, to, to lead a hot rod racer as well, bags of ex 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 experience, he is not going to be, be, be pressured, is he? He's not going to make a mistake under that relentless charge of Glenn Bell, I wouldn't have thought. 
No, I can't see Malcolm making a mistake. Uh, I think it's down to Glenn to uh, to pull something out of the bag, 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 really. Bit of a wobbly moment then for Glenn Bell as well as the laps are counting down here at Foxhall Stadium. Race distance, 75 laps, going to go the whole distance, but it is reaching a, uh, a fascinating climax as the cars... You can see the uh, star marshal there, up there on the uh, gantry, just indicating to the drivers where they are in the race at the moment. moment. Lee Pepper, the Peugeot 206, you can see there, is a back-marking car in car 155 again. Glenn taking a look around the outside. And all the time, Dave, Dave, Dave the 303 car is closing in. So it's Blackman v Bell at the moment, right at the front of this race. But Simpson now is within fighting distance of these two. Again, Blair Bell going all the way around the outside. But Blackman, you have to say, is holding a cor cor correct and tight line there, Carl. Yeah, he's driving very, very well at the minute. Obviously, Glenn Glenn's probably struggling to see at the same oh. time. There's a gap. Is there a gap? No. He, he, he left a gap, didn't he? Glenn went for it, and, and then Malcolm shut the door. We've just, just, just got ten laps left to run. within two car lengths of the uh, duo at the front. Down to the final few laps, Carl. And at this point, what as a race driver are the emotions that are going through when you know you're being challenged and you know you're so near yet so far? You're just trying to keep it smooth and not make any mistakes, Dave. Oh, and Malcolm makes a mistake. He does. He left a gap there. Glenn Bell kind of muffled his way through. Now Simpson's going to take a look as well. So Simpson trying to take advantage as well now. Glenn Bell is in the lead from Malcolm Blackman. And there you can see uh, Glenn Bell has got what he wanted on the line there. He's left a gap to find a way through. Bell and Bell coming together there. And Blackman gets demoted. Gavin Murray goes past the ensuing carnage, if you like. As, uh, well, Blackman was right across the front of Simpson's car. There is Gavin Murray now who's uh, up into second place just in the final stages of this race my goodness what a race we're having just four laps remain Glenn Bell leads from Gavin Murray in second place and there we can see our South African driver in the white Tigra Neville Loosemore sadly we've lost our German entry Willie Holtman's in car 467 but that is our Northern Ireland race leader at the moment Glenn Bell under two laps remain then as we're watching Matt Simpson in 303 and Malcolm Blackman then uh, what are coming together between those two which has put Matt up there behind Gavin Murray but there is our race leader from Northern Ireland with just one lap left to run you can see down the side of the car actually sponsored by the event sponsor as well so what value for CP Dines then particularly if he takes the gold roof and surely barring mechanical failure now He's going to do it as the fireworks blast. What an explosive end to this National Hot Rod World Championship as Glenn Bell then does take the win. And we're going to be back for all the reaction of a supreme World Championship race after this break. Welcome back to Foxhall Stadium. And after a dramatic race in the wane, still there's drama, look. After the flags have gone, Malcolm Blackman has turned Matt Simpson around. Blackman clearly unhappy about 
something, Carl. I think that was roles reversed as to how Matthew got past Malcolm in the race. Well, Matt Simpson has cleared off, but it would look like Malcolm Blackman is chasing him on the shale now. Well, hot rod racing, ever so exciting. Carl, you, of course, in the pickups at the moment. You coming back, hot rodding? Yeah, we're racing the pickups at the minute, um, and we'll be back on a short ovals uh, very soon. National Championship weekend this weekend. Expect to see Carl Bordley there. But what can we see going on here as uh, some of our track officials straight in there to try and diffuse any uh, anger there might be between Malcolm Blackman and uh, Matt Simpson. And they appear to be doing a good job at the moment. So uh, clearly a bit of uh, animosity there at one point as uh, Blackman turned Simpson around after the flag. Now he could be in all sorts of uh, trouble for that with the uh, officials. We'll see. Blackman's out of the car now. And he all smiles. And it looks like he's heading off to... There's the race winner, Glenn Bell. I'm going to leg it down there and have a word with Glenn Bell as Malcolm Blackman seems to be in there to offer his congratulations to the new world champion. Right, let's hot foot and see what uh, Glenn Bell has got to say for his remarkable result and taking the world championship crown and the gold roof to Northern Ireland. Well, an absolutely phenomenal, dramatic race. Let's get the reaction of the man as he gets out of the car here, Glenn Bell. Well, it was full of drama, full of incident, but you seem to really keep a cool head there. Yeah, uh, you had to in them conditions. It, it was just a water line everywhere. There was only one lane, and that was up the middle, up the middle of the street. If you didn't use it, you were just aggravating. There's a couple of times I was, I was hacking down the street, but I'm um, honestly keeping the gallery, just picking them off, biding my time, and just keep going and going. And what was really nice to see, Glenn, was the fact that the very first person over here to congratulate you was the outgoing champion, Malcolm Blackman. Yeah, yeah I, I have a lot of respect for Malcolm, so well. he's, you know, he's definitely a good driver. And yeah, I, I, I like Malcolm so do. Well, listen, we'll have a proper chat with you in a while. Well done to you. No, thank you. Now, again, someone else that had a phenomenal race, and um, I have to be honest, I don't know whether I put the commentator's curse on you because I personally had you down for the win in the wet, but Gavin, drove it with your head, and whilst others, it would appear, all around were losing theirs, you were just coming on strong. That was really hard work to, you know, at the start there, the cars were sort of running away from me, and I thought, you know, keep your head and they'll come back, and luckily they did, the car came improved in the second half of the race and uh, went off probably the last 10 but we've done enough to to, to keep that gap really but oh it's a hell of a race so confirmation of the result then glenn bell takes the win then it was gavin murray second place matt simpson third kim weaver fourth now malcolm blackman out of the results here because he's taken his car away from the track carl and he's having nothing to do with the scrutineers or anything so he's he's kind of re refusing a trophy isn't he yeah, it looks that way, Dave. Yeah, a bit of a disappoint, you know, disappointing end to a, to a weekend, really. So as the confetti cannons fire, spoils across the podium, and Speedworth Stock Car Racing continues to run at Foxhall Stadium as part of this speed weekend. The Super Stocks, those single-seater specials you can see there uh, going around the circuit, their world championship, it's going to be on Sky Sports HD. It is at Foxhall Stadium on August the 18th. Carl Bordley, thanks for being alongside. Thank you, Dave. And don't forget, National Hot Rods in action this weekend at Hennesford Hills for the National Championship. From me, Dave Richardson, bye-bye. Thank you for watching.